today here on Podcast One. Today we're at the back of my house here in Kerikere in the far north of New Zealand and uh, we're going to discuss with you the basics of grounding. Grounding means to be prepared for meditation. With grounding it's important to understand the basic principles and throughout the podcast series we're going to be able to start you off right from the beginning which will allow you to work through the basic keys to understanding how to meditate and of course how to get to the connection with your family and spirit. The hardest part of understanding meditation is simply yourself and if you don't have any understanding of who you are it will be very difficult as to how to get there. So the first key step is to learn to ground. To understand how to get the basics of grounding one needs to be in a safe place. As you can see I'm in a nice safe environment here at the back of my house. We wanted to shoot a little earlier down at the waterfall but the sound was uh, pretty bad so we thought we'd bring it up closer to the still waters. Still water representing the stillness within inside of oneself. To be able to find the stillness within you, you need to be able to learn to sit still. And that's the first major hurdle. For some of us who are busy, our everyday lives are pretty frantic. We've got businesses to run or children to take care of or husbands to back and support, especially when they're working 24-7 and you're working as well. With the kids, it's pretty hardcore. And it's very hard to find some time for you. So. To learn to be able to do that, you need to dedicate yourself to it. With dedication, you can find the focus to understand who you are. Let's just be honest, everyone's pretty busy these days. And with that busyness, we're unable to find out who we are. And in fact, we lose our way with our own insight. We, we, we get lost and we can't find our way to the understanding of meditation. For me, as a person, it's really important to be able to sit outside. I like to have special places i.e. the waterfall which I showed you earlier at the start of the shoot and of course my meditation room at home I like to meditate out of my boat when I'm by myself I just sit on the boat and just rock with the waves so you must find your own special environment too this is a place that needs to be created for you and for you alone places like your own bedroom you may have a little sanctuary with some uh, candles some crystals perhaps and just some nice things just for you and when you go into that zone you need to be able to turn off the phone, uh, turn off the television, uh, making sure no one's going to come around for a coffee and a natter. So you need to be able to set yourself up. Once you've done that, you can begin to understand how to ground. So now we've set ourselves a nice safe spot. Clearly I'm standing up and would much rather be sitting down and perhaps even lying down. But because I'm doing a podcast today, that's not going to happen. However, I'm just going to run through with you the basic steps. First of all, like I've said, be able to set yourself a positive, safe environment with no disruptions. That's a major. The second thing I'd like you to focus on is learning to breathe. Although I might be standing up out here in the bush, I'm standing in bare feet, and that's a way of grounding within itself. Uh, some ways you can go down to the beach for a walk, as an example, and you can be in your bare feet. Uh, and that's a nice grounding too, because when you go to the ocean, when you come back you feel cleansed, you, you feel like you've connected with Mother Earth and Father Sky and it's just a nice thing to do. But what we're trying to do is trying to actually do it with focus and that's a really important situation to be in. Um, grounding is a really interesting technique because if you haven't got the grounding, you're, or in other words, if you haven't got a good solid foundation then it's going to be very difficult for you to be in control of what you're trying to achieve. Being in control of yourself through meditation is really important. You know, once you start meditating and you start learning how to do that, you'll find yourself probably falling asleep, um, waking yourself up snoring, that kind of thing. Even getting to the dribble stage where um, you know you sort of go into the zone, you, you make that sort of sound and hope like heck no one's watching. Well that's a really good thing because that's what we're trying to achieve. We're actually going to be trying to achieve to be able to sustain being awake or for another words, um, being aware of what's going on in your dream state. Now it will happen where you'll fall asleep and do all those things, however the more you do it the better you'll get at it. For me, after so many years of meditation and, and working with spirit and linking into people's families on the other side and of course doing live shows and all the things that I do, uh, I can do it in three breaths and that's a trained exercise. However, that's taken a long time to get there probably nearly 40 years in fact, and that's how old I am, so I've been doing this for quite a long time. 
I think it's really important for us to begin by learning to understand the basics of grounding. Okay? So what we're going to try and achieve today is to get that solid foundation set up. By being still, once you've set your foundation, and just learning to breathe casually right down to the deep of your stomach, into your tummy, uh, first and foremost you're relaxing your muscles and your body. And that's a really important thing to do. The second thing to do is to allow yourself and your thoughts to be at one with each other. And that's quite hard for some of us because we think too much. So we believe that's what we do, then therefore we'll do it. By having that safe environment, whether it be with the candles in your room, out on the beach, out here in the bush like I am, you need to be able to understand that you are safe. And once you put a nice protection prayer around yourself in that first instance, you'll understand that your faith will become strong right from the start. Once you ask for the protection and ask for the blessing to be with you, then you'll learn to meditate quite quickly. If you don't and just want to try and sit still and breathe and get into the zone, well it's going to be a very hard road for you. So the advice is, first and foremost, set that safe zone up, then do a nice affirmation, a nice prayer, asking your family perhaps, or your angels, or the Creator himself, or the universe, just for protection and blessing. Once you've done that, then you can go forward with leaps and bounds. Now that we're learning to breathe, and we're learning to calm down, and we're learning to slow our bodies down, our mind will often wander into the day-to-day -day business things. The family, problem with the car, the office stuff. Well, that's okay. Let all those things flow into you. Let them all be there. The reason why I'm saying that is, is because a lot of Western people often try to push it away and they try to find that blank spot in their mind. It's not actually that easy to do. You can't just blank out all your thoughts. So the goal is, is to allow those thoughts to come through. Don't push them away. And what happens is that you learn to accept them for what they are. By accepting them, you can actually face them head on in your day to day life after your meditation. So, as your thoughts come to the fore, and you're acknowledging them as they come through, then they'll dissipate all by themselves. The reason why that is, is because you've learnt to understand what the issue is, and then you've learnt to put into order perhaps, or a bit more of a time management situation in your mind, of how you're going to cope and deal with those situations when you've come back from your meditation. It's quite simple really. So for me as a person, I've learnt over many years, lots and lots of different affirmations, and I've learned to stick with the things that work for me. I have to say that it's not about religion, however it is. Religion is in your hands. This podcast and of course the following podcasts are about self-inspiration, self-encouragement and self-awareness. Take from it what you will. But I have to say, I've done many murder cases, lots of TV stuff, and of course live shows and private readings all over the world and the one affirmation that works for me goes as follows. When I meditate or do any, any spiritual work, I offer an affirmation. There are so many different affirmations out there that work for me and of course for other people. But I personally like this one. It's a personal one to me, it is very special to me and it works incredibly well. You have to understand that you must try and find your own affirmation in order for you to feel good about it. Remember, once you've said it, it is spoken. And therefore, you must have faith in what you've said. You must believe and follow through on what you've stated. Once it's spoken, it can't come back. You can't retract it. So that's what we call faith. Having faith in an affirmation is incredibly important. Don't doubt it. Never doubt it. Don't fear it be at peace with what you've asked. Mine goes as follows. I clothe myself in a robe of white light, composed of the love, power and wisdom of God. Not only for my own protection, but for all those who see it and come into contact with it, are drawn to God and healed. I ask now of all negative energies and or entities, with me or near me now, to be cleansed, raised and bound to the white light. I ask for the angels of the white light to bring forth their love, and I ask for my friends and family in the heavens to come forward with their information their positivity, and most importantly, their love for myself. I ask them therefore that the tūpuna of the land watch my back, keep me protected, 
and allow me to bear witness to the understanding of negative energies that may come into the presence of myself. I ask most importantly for you at home watching this podcast that you trust what has been spoken and I ask that you find your spiritual path through affirmation. I ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the guardian angels of the white light and the two corner of the Lamb. Kia ora, Amen. So now you've got your affirmation. It's important to understand that that's my affirmation but you're most welcome to use it at any stage that you will. You may offer a prayer up to perhaps Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael or whoever you feel comfortable with. Just remember that it's important to stand by what you say. They won't let you down. So let's do a little recap. You've made a nice safe environment for yourself. No interruptions, no telephones, no kids, just a nice environment for you. You've then therefore offered a nice protection prayer, an affirmation of love to inspire you and, to, and of course with that inspiration you need to know that that faith that you have must come to the fore. No more doubt, certainly no more fear. Now that you've got that you need to understand that there'll be many things happening to you. Of course I stated earlier that about thoughts and how to override them. It's really important to understand that allowing them to flow through you is a really good thing to do. Once this happens you're able to sort out your everyday life and of course your spirit people will show you the way. What does it mean to show you the way? I'll give you an example perhaps. This morning I saw myself uh, sitting and there was a puff of smoke. I didn't quite know what it meant. This is just before I woke up, if you know what I mean. Just that nice half awake, half asleep zone. I couldn't work it out. I was quite concerned that maybe something had caught fire. And I thought, no, that's not what it's about. It's got to be a positive experience to it. Well to get down to the river today we got on the tractor and the tractor blew a big black cloud of smoke right out in front of us as I started it up and I realized that I was on the right path to doing what I'm doing. So instead of seeing it as a negative I took it as a positive and trusted and within the trust they, sh they showed me that they were right and I should listen more and I think you at home get all that stuff too. The only thing is, is that your fear and your doubt creeps in and even your conditioned mind. Conditioned mind being the way you're taught, the way you've been shown how to connect and perhaps the way you've been brought up with religion or even non-religion. For a belief in nothing is still a belief. So it's entirely up to you how you take it but I can tell you that when spirits show you they mean business. So by understanding how to ground and then therefore learn to ask We'll invite you to the next podcast. The next podcast will be the basic foundation for meditation as far as what happens when someone talks to me or how do I differentiate the different voices in my head. Are they mine? Are they spirits? Nah, surely they must be mine. The key to understanding the voices is if you've offered a prayer of protection, once you've opened to receive, everything that comes to you will be from them and them being in the positive vein because you've asked for a positive loving experience. How could it be negative if you haven't asked? If you remember correctly through the affirmation we ask for all negative energies and or entities with us or near us now to be cleansed, raised and bound to the white light. What that actually means is anything that negative that's surrounding you, people's thoughts, uh, the way your partner treats you, maybe the boss at work has left lots of heaviness with you and all the drama that goes on, once you ask for that to be gone, negative energies, then they've gone. You don't accept them in your life and you don't want them anymore. But you do it with love and positivity. Then therefore the voices that you have going on in your head are positive. Why would they not be? So the confusing part is it's your thoughts and their thoughts and in the next podcast we'll try and work that out for you. We'll simply show you the basics and go through the keys to understanding how to differentiate the difference between your thoughts and their thoughts. I certainly look forward to it. I look forward to your company once again. We will be in a different location next time so you never know where we're going to end up. Thank you very much for joining me. See you again soon.